Hello. Let's revisit our understanding of development models. So there are three things that we're looking at here. One is the waterfall model, two is the agile model, and three is a hybrid model, and I'm not going to spend very much time on number three at all. I will say up front, this is not meant to be an exhaustive explanation of any of these models. It's just meant to remind you of the key points as you get ready for your exams. So the waterfall model is certainly a very common model and people think of it as a very traditional model where you go through the four stages, analysis, design, development and evaluation, and you basically do everything in order and it'll show up nicely on your Gantt chart uh, where you'll be able to see particular tasks and you'll be able to look at a phase and say, yes, that was the analysis phase. And you do everything once and you do it properly and you get to the end. And it's very good when you've got a very certain um, set of expectations and of requirements and the person just wants it built. They know exactly what they want and they want it built. And I would say that this is not so much for my current students, but for future students, when you're doing your um, school assessed task, you're probably actually better off with a waterfall model because you're probably not going to have time for an Agile model. Agile sounds like it should be quick, um, but my experience is that students have trouble actualizing it. So let's talk about what the Agile model is. Now, first of all, Agile, I think, is really unusual in that it's, a, it's an idea that came together through people who are passionate about this sort of thing, and it's not being pushed by a particular company or something. It's not a product that somebody's getting paid for, although there are plenty of people who will get on the bandwagon with Agile, and there's lots and lots of organisations that use it and swear by it. So what Agile does is you're building this thing called an MVP, a minimum viable product, and you're doing it in a cycle. So you're doing a little bit of each one of those things and you're building the first stage of it. So you might just have the bare bones functionality there. And then you'll go through again and you'll get more feedback from the customer about what they want and what they like. And you've learned things from your first version of the product and then you cycle through it again and you release another version of the product and then you release another version of the product and the idea is that you get something quickly although you know some projects are just so big that quickly can still mean you know three to five years but you get something more quickly than if you're waiting for the entire sophisticated thing to be built and the um, customer might in fact at some point say no you know what I'm happy with this we don't we, I don't want to keep spending money and time on this let's just go with how it is at the moment so lots of online platforms um, whether they're technically using agile or not do go through this iterative approach and very famously Japanese automakers are constantly improving the way that they build cars um, whereas Western um, auto manufacturers much more typically do the waterfall approach and have said well this is the design like we've designed this car and we're going to build it forever more like this now they're very broad generalizations um, now the agile model is much more than just that iterative cycle uh, there are all sorts of other principles of it I don't think you're likely to be asked about them on the exam I think we're really only interested in agile as it relates to project management and coming back to what I said earlier I actually found that most people really struggled to get their projects built, much less taking it through various cycles of iteration and improvement. And finally, I want to talk about a hybrid approach. And you won't be surprised at all to learn that a hybrid approach is a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B. It might be that you're going to do it in three stages and you're going to have a bare bones product. So it's like um, agile in bigger chunks. You can take a little bit from each column and some certainly some people do that. Uh, I certainly think that there's a lot to be said for having um, agile elements in your own development cycle. One last thought I'll leave you with is that I think that this iterative version of doing something I actually find is how I develop software for myself. I will have the very base functionality and then I will add on the next layer of complexity and then I'll add on the next layer of complexity. Now I probably won't actually push it out to the customer yet um, so that's why it's not really an agile approach and I don't do all the other agile things but I think there's a lot to be said for being very compartmentalized and saying well I'm just going to build this. And now I'm just going to build this. And that's where you've got some real strength with something like it. That some people said in the practice exam, they said, oh, Agile is a good choice because it's more responsive to things going wrong or things falling behind. Now, where that's true is that if phase one is running late or you're short of resources, you can move stuff out of the scope for phase one into phase two or into phase three. Um, and there is a chance to pick them up later in the Agile approach. But it isn't actually any more time efficient. 
um, and time slip all the time on projects um, timings so this is the, you know it's not um, it's not a simple solution to that it's not a silver bullet um, you can still run behind on agile but yes it does give you that flexibility to say yeah we'll just pick that up in the next cycle but having said that even in waterfall I've been on waterfall projects where people have said oh we'll just do that in phase two um, and then there's never a phase two but that's a whole other story that's what I wanted to say about development models. They're both good and they both work for particular situations.